Staying with coronavirus, and there's a lot to cover this morning with lockdowns easing and roadmap announcements. Norman Swan, presenter of the RN Health Report and the ABC's popular Coronacast, joins us now from Sydney. Good morning to you, Norman. Hi, Lisa. Hey, I just wanted to start actually with the news we received overnight from the US that the former Secretary of State Colin Powell had died because of complications with coronavirus, and yet he had been double vaccinated. So what's happened there? Um, he had a condition, it's reported, called multiple myeloma, which is a blood-borne, which is a blood cancer, crudely an immune system cancer. So he had a compromised immune system and he hadn't yet had, apparently he was due for his third dose, but actually hadn't had it yet. Um, and people, these are the people who really do need their third doses and um, it's, it's very sad. So it's not an indication that the um, un that vaccination doesn't work, but it doesn't work very well in people who are immune compromised. Interestingly, that drug, Ronaprev, that's been approved and bought by the government and the new AZ anti antibody cocktail, those are the sorts of drugs that could help people who are immunocompromised to be on long term because they provide the kind of antibody protection that a vaccine might. OK, now uh, lots to talk about on the COVID front this morning. We'll, we'll get to the various uh, easing restrictions shortly. But let's talk booster shots. Uh, where are we with that, Norman? Well, all that's been announced so far is uh, boost third... I, I think we should stop talking about booster shots, by the way. We should talk about third doses. OK. These are three-dose vaccines. If they'd had time to work out the right dosage, they almost certainly are three-dose vaccines, like hepatitis B, like um, the human papillomavirus was initially. And that's what they are. And we're just only realising that now. So we've only done that for there. Now, the government accepts that there will be a booster campaign, but they haven't announced it. The problem is we're getting very enthusiastic about opening up when 56% of the population is covered by vaccination in Victoria. 44% aren't. There's going to be a lot more virus circulating, as Nancy Bachter said. You're already seeing outbreaks in residential aged care in New South Wales, elderly people dying vaccinated. We need to have a campaign, one would have thought, starting now, if we're getting so enthusiastic about opening up, to protect our most vulnerable. So the people who were immunised in residential aged care back in March and April, the healthcare workers, the hotel quarantine workers, the airport workers who were immunised then, they all need a third dose kind of now mm. as we open up. Mm. Is there much conversation going on about that behind the scenes? I'm sure there is, and the government's not you know, denying that that's going to happen, but it needs to happen apace, I would have thought, because um, you're going to see more outbreaks in residential aged care, more families being denied seeing their loved ones um, until you get that campaign going. And the initial campaign wasn't very successful. They got their act together eventually, but they need to go back in. And uh, following on from the discussion about uh, third doses, it comes as there's, there's new figures, new data on vaccine efficacy waning over time. What do we know about that? Yeah, so um, this is kind of a bit of a mea culpa. I just want to correct something that I've been saying. So based on Public Health England data that I talked about a couple of weeks ago on, on News Breakfast, um, I was talking about Pfizer waning quite quickly and Astra not waning much at all and then them crossing over at about four and a half months and Astra sticking in there. Now, what has happened is that Public Health England has revised that and brought out new data, and this is part of the COVID story, which shows that, in fact, Astra does keep going down and Pfizer keeps on going down. And Pfizer... Um, sorry about this, doing my graphics live. Um, Pfizer it always performs better than Astra in that situation, but they both go down. And, there's, and, the, and there also is a diminution um, in hospitalisation protection. Um, not a lot with Pfizer, but there, it's probably more with Astra. And that's one of the reasons for a third dose campaign is that it's not just protection against infection, the protection against hospitalisation does diminish as well. Okay, mm. nice, uh, nice graph work. You put Casey Briggs out of a job. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, let's hope Casey doesn't start doing it. We just it. got the gift That's there. The Thank gift. you, Norman. <laughs> hey, He's uh, got his big thing next door. He's <laughs> his big thing in more ways than one. Hey, let's uh, go to the um, uh, Queensland reopening. What are your thoughts about what the uh, Premier has announced? Um, well, she's sticking with the national plan. It's, uh, at, some point, at some point, you've got to open up. And the Queensland and Western Australia in particular have got a dilemma. How do they motivate people to um, be immunised? Mm -hmm. And if you set a date, 17th of December, we've been saying this on Coronacast for a while, just set a date, 17th of December, we're opening up. Then that provides a motivation and uh, to go and get immunised. Most Queenslanders are not hesitant. It's the same as anywhere else in Australia. They will come forward for their immunisation when they know there's a date and they're going to be vulnerable from that date on. 
Mm. Hey, Norman Swan, thank you. You're welcome. See ya.